So um, what I'd like to do now is kind of shift gears a little bit to music and the arts and those other aspects of life that go so well with food and drink. I mean, this is, this is why we're alive, isn't it? Not to work behind a desk and be on Zoom all day long, but to enjoy ourselves and to be with other people and to enjoy um, the fruits and the vegetables, <laughs> wine and the beer. So um, moving uh, in that direction, now let's introduce Andy Williamson. Yay. Andy, can you, uh, can you join us now and maybe say a little bit about what you're up to with Ashburton Arts, because that's such an amazing project. Um, and I have to admit, sadly, I've not yet been to Ashburton Arts, but no, have you been? Fabulous, many times, it's fabulous. But I know that, um, I know it's fabulous, but I have no, I'm, I'm super boring in my own <laughs> life, I'm incredibly boring. I don't really do much. I'm trying to break out of that mold. It's like it's like a London venue in terms of the quality of the actually like a London venue in the middle of the it's fabulous. So because of Andy. So Andy, why don't you tell us about it? Uh, thank you very much. Um, first, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just had to move upstairs. I'm now in the studio upstairs at the art centre because I'd forgotten that our regular oops, sorry about the clunk. Um, our regular flamenco class um, had booked an extra session tonight in the main hall. Um, so they're just starting doing flamenco downstairs. So any um, stomps and uh, stomps and Spanish howls uh, in the noises off, that's what's going on down there. Um, so the art centre is in the old Methodist church in the centre of Ashburton. Um, in fact, I will give you a quick tour. Why not? As I'm speaking, I'm going to try the whole portable technology thing, if I can untangle my headphones, um, and do a little tour. So I'm going down the stairs now, and I'm going to go outside just to uh, let everyone see where we are in this place. Um, this is the old Methodist church in the centre of Ashburton. It was built in 1835 um, uh, in the wake of John Wesley preaching up and down the country in the 18th century. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. I forgot about the length of the Wi-Fi connection. Can you hear me again? We're back in. Okay. Um, I'll have a. So yeah, that's the that's the place. I won't go outside again. Uh, I'm now standing in our bar, which is recently painted and is no longer the Methodist pink, and there's now a few more um, exotic colours. And I'll give you a little peek into the flamenco class. Here we go. So I won't inter interrupt them too much. <coughs> Um, so this is just to give you an idea of what's going on. As Jonathan was saying, we have a, an amazing array of performances here. What I discovered is that um, top quality world artists will perform if there's a great, a nice venue to put, perform in, and it's roughly on the way to other places. Um, and so, uh, so I'm a bit out of breath now. I'm now upstairs in our dance studio up here, freshly painted up here as well. Um, uh, can I give you a minute to catch your breath and, and ask sure. you a question? Um, there, there are a couple of things about the Ashburn Arts Center that I think are really, um, from my point of view anyway, um, worth noting. One is that the community came together and they, they bought this place and they turned it into the amazing venue that it is. And the second thing is that it's, it is it has created a venue for local artists and has created, um, I suppose, uh, a new sort of cultural orientation in this area. Yes, I, I agree. Um, now, um, it took someone to make it happen and, and I was lucky to be in the right place at the right time and it was me who kind of did that, although not alone at all, um, where there was a great team of people who came together to form a the form the incorporated entity that we needed to be in order to raise money and to bid at the auction which happened um, but essentially we we did a crowdfunding thing which is as far as I'm aware a unique kind of crowdfunding I haven't come across it before although I'm sure someone else has done something like it for an auction you can't um, you don't have 
a target to, um, as to how much money to raise. And you also, you can't let on how much money you've raised, otherwise you give the game away because it's a public auction. Um, but we managed to raise pledges of donations and loans of a, in the six months um, after I got it listed as a community asset and they had to postpone the first auction um, of about £180,000. And most, the majority of that was in loans that people were happy to give us on a long-term zero-interest basis, initially for three years. Um, uh, about 10 to 20 percent of those loans have been out repaid um, now, but most of them are happy to roll, keep rolling them over indefinitely on an annual basis, um, still at zero interest. Which, and that that is the key thing that has allowed us to really, really exist, um, because we don't have any kind of annual or monthly rent or mortgage to find. We just we have this amazing building, and we're free to put things on without really having to think too much about the business plan aspect of it. So we don't, we don't have that pressure of either salaries or rent to, 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 um, to make things happen. Um, and that freedom connected with a place like this is something which I think every community really needs. Um, and it's existed for years one way or another in village halls and, uh, and, and churches um, in that they've been used for all kinds of purposes. Um, and from an arts point of view, there are certain basic things that you need to have for an arts venue to really work. Um, and those things essentially is someone who knows how to put on events and who knows how to operate things like a PA sound system and, um, and knows what musicians need and, uh, and dancers and artists and other things like that. Um, and there are people like that all over the place. They just, um, I was lucky enough to, to be able to, I guess, support myself while, while we got this going for a few years um, in my other work as a, a musician um, and, and in my wife's work, I suppose, as well. Um, so, um, but yeah, what it's, what it's provided is, well, I would say two things. One is a, a venue, and we're lucky in the architecture that we have here, so it, it comes basically ready-made as a, a really lovely venue um, with great acoustics where, where music of the highest um, caliber can happen and, and everyone can love it. And it's also available for community events, whether they be performances or workshops or talks or um, we've created a local cinema here um, without having to spend very much money, basically about a thousand pounds on a projector and a screen that we got second hand. Um, and um, so the, the real key thing, the key thing here is the attitude that yes, we can just do stuff um, and you don't need a lot to make things happen. Um, does that say enough about it? Um, and does anyone have any questions? Why don't you tell us about what's coming up? I mean, there's some exciting, you know, yeah. there's some exciting music and festivals and things like that coming up, right? Right. So, well, I'll start. I'll go back a little bit, starting on the 17th of May, which, as the people in the UK know, is the date that um, some degree of opening up was allowed after the lockdown of the last many months. Um, uh, it was when theatres were allowed to open to 50% capacity and so on that basis we decided to open on a 50% capacity um, every night for two weeks and call it a festival um, and put on a wide range of things under the name of the Tinner's Moon Festival which is something that we've had um, before lockdown in the last couple of years um, and yeah we had a, a wide range of performers um, uh, we get a really good mixture of touring performers and also people who are based more locally and right now it's the people who are based within a kind of 50 to 100 mile radius that are the majority because they're the easy things to put on and then not put on if, if the laws or rules change such that things have to be cancelled. Uh, coming up we got, um, so uh, let's see, we've got a local jive band called Skidaddle on Saturday and then um, there's a guy who's been here a couple of times before performing the work of Cat Stevens, Yusuf Cat Stevens um, and he's been here before doing Leonard Cohen and Nick Drake so he's a kind of tribute artist. Um, uh, then we've got a um, a musical coming up, a comedy musical called Lord God, which is set in the Torbay of uh, Faulty Towers and uh, P.G. Woodhouse. It's a kind of mix of P.G. Woodhouse, Faulty Towers and Agatha Christie, I suppose, um, with a, a small group of people who've brought, a, brought musical comedy here before from Brighton. Um, we, who else have we got? Ian Shaw, the amazing jazz singer Ian Shaw, who's um, up there in the top male jazz singers of the world, um, who's based in London, who's coming here on the 4th of July. 
Uh, and then at the end of July, we have a, a week-long um, classical chamber music festival with a resident group of uh, a resident string quartet. Um, this is something that was started. It's a really another unique festival idea started by a viola player from Philadelphia called David Yang. And he's been doing this kind of thing in, in Newburyport near Boston for 20 years, and he wanted to do it in the UK. And someone connected me to him somehow and we ended up uh, uh, he ended up coming here in 2019 and running this thing where we have a resident resident international string quartet which has never played together before they all come together um, he puts them all together brings them here uh, they do a few rehearsals and then three big concerts and then three three house concerts where they um, have a big pile of st string quartet music and show it to the audience from Haydn through Bo Mozart to Beethoven to Ravel and Debussy and they choose things and the string quartet sight read them uh, while everyone drinks wine around them and uh, watches that high wire act of sight reading some of the hardest classical music in the world. Um, so that's coming at the end of July for a week and it looks like we'll escape all of the, all the, all the rules will, will not stop us doing that, it looks like. And then, yeah, other things. It's a big program. You're, you're a jazz musician. Don't I am. let them stop you. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> Don't yeah. let rules stop you. It was exactly, yes. Um, I'm definitely uh, in favor of the uh, always ask forgiveness rather than permission exactly. uh, way of uh, life. So Nick, who's a local musician, asks if the Ashburton Blues Festival is still on. Uh, it's not. That was something that was very much uh, another guy's um, baby. Uh, Mike Cranmer started that before I arrived here in 2009, and it uh, ran for a few years while I was here. I played here. I, I played one year supporting Muddy Waters' son. Mud Morgenfeld came to headline it one year, um, but he, he ran out of energy and was a bit ill for a while, and uh, this is Mike, the organizer. And so the Blues Festival is, has subsided for now. Um, but there is still... Is Radiohead still refusing to play? <laughs> I've never asked them. Radiohead? No, I don't know about that. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing. And um, I put the link in the chat. Yeah. So um, if you haven't been, as I haven't been, I'm going to a show soon. Um, no, I am. No, I'm totally yeah, going to go. You should. There's a big festival happening um, later on this year. I know uh, Mama Tokus. It has been promoting that. I think it's in November. No, this is in August, the 7th of August. Um, you may have heard of the Port Elliot Festival. Well, yeah. um, two of the guys who ran a big chunk of that um, are Rick and Shelley, who live in town here. Um, and when the Port Elliot Festival closed down um, a couple of years ago, they, they designed a successor, the little big festival, which was to run last year in Ashburton, or in a farm just outside. Um, and it's, being, it's happening this year on the 7th of August, just for one day. So no overnight camping is on much smaller scale, but it's just, it is happening for one day. And we launched that here yes, on Sunday with Mama Tokus um, being our musical entertainment for the afternoon. Uh, we had a great poet called Luke Wright performing out in the forecourt outside. Um, so that, that's the connection. Fabulous. So put some, put some of that information in the chat. I put the link to Ashburn Arts in the chat. Let's take a little break. Um, thank you so much for being with us, but let's take a little break to get to, you know, just have a little chat with each other, share some views, some news, nice drink in the Barnabies. Um, and uh, when we come back, uh, we are going to hear from some other people. <laughs> 